Now, all eyes are on NVIDIA ahead of the company's third quarter earnings report due out tomorrow after the closing bell. With at least 40 percent of NVIDIA's revenue coming from just four hyperscalers, one key question, do investors need to see a broadening out for the chip giant's growth story to continue? Cisco is one of many companies using NVIDIA's chips. So we're joined now by G2 Patel. He is Cisco's EVP and chief product officer. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it, G2. So I'm curious, just ahead of NVIDIA's earnings and as one of NVIDIA's partners yourselves, how much of a bellwether are their earnings for your own company's demand picture? You know, right now we are going through such an amazing, you know, kind of unprecedented move towards AI, Madison, that um, and NVIDIA is the one who's actually, uh, you know, kind of set the tempo in the market. Um, but what we what we are seeing right now is this is akin to the gold rush where, um, you know, if, if you look at what's happening, the companies that make the picks and shovels, the core infrastructure tend to benefit quite a bit from it. And in the short term in AI, what you'll find is there's a huge amount of overestimation and hype that people might have. But in the long term, people grossly underestimate the impact. So virtually every assumption that we have as humans over the course of the next decade will be challenged and kind of rethought and refactored uh, as we go through it. And as we have actually started to see what's happening is customers are largely struggling right now with, you know, there's too much complexity. Um, there's safety issues in AI and there's skills issues in AI. And those are the areas that probably need to get sorted as um, um, as the higher order bits to make sure that we can really continue this momentum in AI. G2, what's the exact or direct impact then on Cisco's business? And when you talk about the impact here or potential for the growth in sales, I know you have a billion dollars of AI orders you're expecting this fiscal year. What does that number then look like one to two to three years out from now? So if you take a step back and say where exactly, you know, uh, if you look at the AI workloads, there's conventional wisdom has been there's three core areas that are very essential for AI, which is compute, um, the actual models and algorithms, and then the data. What you're now starting to see, something that we've known for a long time that is actually going to be pretty common knowledge now is that there's two other elements that are pretty, um, you know, foundational for that core um, piece, which is networking and security. you got to have low latency, high performance networking, intra GPU in the back end as you're training the models. And you also need to make sure that you've got security uh, so that you can secure the AI models itself so that organizations feel comfortable with making sure that these use cases start going out at mass scale. Uh, and so we are, as you mentioned, we've met, uh, we've said that we're going to have about a billion dollars um, in, uh, in, in orders this year. And we will continue to see that growth because there's actually going to be a fair amount of, um, um, you know, demand signal that we're seeing right now for the underlying networking and security infrastructure, in addition to compute models and uh, data, all, of fi all five areas where Cisco actually plays pretty well. How much of that $1 billion can be attributed to uh, whales, for lack of a better term, uh, versus some smaller businesses that are looking to expand in AI? We're actually seeing um, a pretty um, you know, good distribution even in the enterprise, where in fact you're starting to see repatriation of some of the data centers that are also um, being moved back into the private data center. And organizations want to make sure that they actually have um, you know, some of their, um, you know, core infrastructure that's ready for AI. So modernizing AI data centers that they might have, as well as making sure that they get to be AI ready data centers um, are, are two areas, even in the enterprise, not just within hyperscalers that we're starting to see um, a fair amount of demand for. G2, I know you recently conducted a uh, survey here and nearly 8,000 organizations took part in it. You were asking about AI readiness index, what exactly that looks like. I'm curious, what did you hear back from some of the leaders just in terms of how prepared they are to invest in AI? You know, one of the things that there's a fair amount of appetite and preparation for AI, but there's only 13% of the organizations say that they're ready to deploy AI fully. And that's because of the things that we talked about. You know, the complexity is still pretty high um, for AI infrastructure. And then there's the AI safety and security issues. One of the things that we want to do at Cisco is make AI infrastructure plug and play ready so that it just reduces the cognitive overload for organizations as they start to get their um, their applications ready and the, their core infrastructure ready to make sure that they can prepare for a huge uptick in demand. 
I know you also mentioned that one of the top three challenges for companies who are looking to ready themselves on AI is the lack of the right skilled labor, the right manpower in place. I'm curious in your conversations with other partners, customers, and companies, has anyone expressed concern about how the incoming administration's immigration policies could potentially worsen that challenge for skilled labor moving forward? I think it's too early to tell, but one of the things that we've always believed is skilled labor that's, um, um, you know, one of the bedrocks of America is uh, making sure that we actually encourage legal immigration of skilled labor. And that's something that um, uh, we continue to remain optimistic with and we'll work with the government. I think it's too early to tell what the policies are going to be just yet. G2 Patel, Cisco's Executive Vice President and Chief Product Officer, thanks so much. Thank you for having me.